Julia and the Land of Variable Standards, a children's story about chlamydia. Once upon a time, in a flowery suburb renowned for its eco-conscious upper-middle-class sensibilities and impossibly impeccable taste, little Julia Rue began her day in a most disarmingly devious way. Julia Rue! Mama Rue called. Come and get your grasses, grains, and other various types of vegetation. We strictly herbivorous marsupials of the Macapodidae family need to eat our breakfast if we want to grow up to be big and strong. Not having any natural predators is not a reason to let ourselves go to the pits. Mama Rue was always concerned about silly things like family reputation, body size, and the merits of her specially crafted, strictly herbivorous diet. Sorry, Mama, can't. I need to leave for school early. Miss Wallaby wanted me to do some extra work before first hour. The little Rue replied, her sweetness and studiousness successfully convincing Mama Rue of the bold-faced lie. Hopping along Main Street, perky like the utter boob she was, Julia stole a sneaky look left, a sneaky look right, and took an even sneakier turn down Hooligan Road. Hooligan Road was the hip hangout for all the skis balls, sketch bombs, and juvenile delinquents of Yuckydale. Having never ventured down this road before, the young Rue was instantly identified as out of place by Carl Koala. He was the leader of the gang of Fascalark today, the dreamiest, the most traditionally masculine, and equipped with the strongest chin. He took it upon himself to find out what Julia wanted on their little piece of simulated heaven. Hey kid, he said. What brings your thumb and little bud to my turf? Awestruck by his sheer animal magnetism and a raw, arboreal sex appeal, Julia remained silent for what many later deemed to be far too long of a time. A good ten minutes later, Julia eked out a tiny, Oh, you can help just browsing. Utterly aware that no one just browses on Hooligan Road, Carl Koala took it upon himself to teach the presumptuous little Rue a lesson or two about the consequences of truancy in sketchy neighborhoods. Your kid. Take this glass of koala cola that you didn't see me pour. Eagerly, hoping for an invitation to join their ragtag band and escape the boredom of her everyday routine, Julia Rue did a very stupid thing. She drank the koala cola. The next thing Julia Rue knew, the world turned woozy and colorful, and a fantastically glittery unicorn began telling her all about why cats do not obey the laws of gravity and are therefore alien beings to be shunned. After a few bizarre and generally startling minutes, the haze turned to clear. But Julia Rue, poor Julia Rue, had not a clue where she was. Ever so slowly, standing up on her two hoppity feet, Julia found herself in a most peculiar place. A desert where the only buildings in sight were a Starbucks, a slightly smaller Starbucks, a CVS, a penitentiary with the word Kresge stamped on the side, and a Whole Foods, the only place in the world where bread cost about as much as a Volkswagen. Something was amiss. She stumbled into a CVS. It all looked too familiar. Same standard layout, same abundance of hair products, same aggressively efficient fluorescent lighting, same disgruntled employees disgrunting in the same way disgruntled employees disgrunt everywhere. Hurrying up to the cashier, Julia approached a wolf, identified by name tag as Wendy, and said, Do you know how I can get back to Yuppie Dale? Yuppie Dale? Never heard of it. Here, eat this fresh scone you didn't see me bake. Pressing the cranberry and orange goodness into her hand. Confused, but happy to have a scone, Julia ate it without even thinking that something might be amiss. Thank you, Wendy, but can you point me somewhere I might be able to find my way home? She replied. Girl, try the Starbucks. Were her only words in reply. Running as fast as she could, she played a quick game of rock, paper, scissors with herself and chose the larger Starbucks as the most likely candidate for the information she sought. She entered the overpriced temple of job. Charming Barry Barista, a Barbary macaque, more commonly found in the Atlas Mountains of Algeria and Morocco, wondered who this young stranger could be. Hello, miss. What brings your non-fat soy macchiato beauty to my humble establishment? He sweetly but sketchily inquired. I'm not sure. She replied, thinking over the facts of the situation. Carl Koala gave me some koala cola, and then all of a sudden the 
world got woozy. And I talked to a unicorn. Before I knew it, I ended up here. Then I talked to some wolf at CBS, and she gave me this scone. And all of a sudden, I'm starting to feel very itchy. Ah. He said, Welcome to the land of variable standards. You must be named here. Have a seat. The land of variable standards? What's that? She cried. A dreamy look in his eyes, he began his story. But before he got anywhere, he insisted that she drink a, tr a frappuccino that she didn't see him pour. Unthinking again, wrapped up in the apparent kindness of strangers, totally fixated on her desperate need for a drink, in the same way she desperately realized she wanted a scone, she accepted. He began his story again. The land of variable standards is a magical land where people go, men, women, college students particularly, when they let their primal needs overtake common sense. Like not taking food, beverages, and sexual flavors from people you don't know. <laughs> that itchiness you feel, Julia? That itchiness is a punishment we in the business call Chlamydia Trachomatics! Chlamydia? The infamously common STD made of obli obligate intercellular organisms, which are the leading cause of blindness worldwide? No! Anything but that! She shrieked, tears welling in her eyes. Recovering from the shock, she begged. What can I expect? What can I do? Is there any hope? A force of intercom, Barry Barista, the Barbary macaque, commenced his prepared instructions, given so many times to college students who had ended up in the land of variable standards. First, you must go to the land of Searle, where a quack in a coach will ask you three questions. The first two will be variations of, are you pregnant, and do you have mono? Say no. He will ask for tests. Ask for the chlamydia test. He will know what to do, and will prescribe you some drugs that will make it go away. But even with the drugs, it will not go away entirely until you have learned your lesson. Then every day, you must repeat 100 times, I will always ask if my partner has been tested for STDs. <laughs> I will always pour my own drinks. I will always make my own food or only take food from people that I trust. If you do these things and then snap your fingers three times while we're feeding, there's no place like a convent. There's no place like a convent. Ah! You'll be transported back to your home, safe and sound. Relieved that this situation had a pathology, Julia thanked Barry and sent off to follow his instructions. She got her test, denied her pregnancy in mono, and took her antibiotics. Thank goodness it's a bacterial STD. She repeated over and over again her special phrase until she learned to always think before acting. Finally, when this all had been completed, she put on some tea pain, snapped her fingers three times, and said, There's no place like a convent! There's no place like a convent! The world went woozy again. She blacked out, and when she came to, she found that she had returned back to Hooligan Road. Carl Koala was standing over her, smug, sketchy, yet concerned. What happened? Julia exclaimed. What did you do to me, you dirty rat who drugged me and sent me away to a distant land where I got chlamydia? No, Julia. Carl softly replied. You did not get chlamydia. You never had it. I just wanted to teach you a lesson or two, a little one who was too eager, too trusting, too excited to join my world of sketchy activity. This isn't the place for you. Go home to your family before your mother gets word. You've been blacked out for a while, thanks to the lesson I was teaching you. With roofies. <laughs> right away, ashamed at what she had done, she went back home to Mama Roo and Papa Roo. Hugging them dearly, she vowed from then on to be suspicious of people who tried to give her scones and colas and frappuccinos. Oh my! Because if people try to give you things, you'll probably get a venereal disease. And, and die! die.